How's it going everybody? David here with SolarPowerMyRV.com and today I just wanted to give you guys a quick tour of this Jayco Eagle fifth wheel solar system that we just completed for these full-time RVers. Starting on the roof, we installed eight of these 200 watt rich solar panels for a total of 1600 watts of solar. This amount of solar should recharge about 500 to 600 amp hours of battery capacity in a good sunny day. Moving on to the front of the RV, this is where we install the batteries, the inverter, and all the rest of the components here in this front compartment bay. This was for a generator pre-wire, but they didn't have a generator here, so we installed the system. This is where the batteries were originally, so we uh, moved them here out into this bay with all the other equipment. And we have four of these 200 amp hour rich solar batteries for a total of 800 amp hours. Now these guys are full-time living in this RV, so it, it usually when you're full-time living, I usually recommend at least 600 amp hours or even 800 like we have here to be even more comfortable. With this amount of battery capacity, you can easily power an all-electric residential fridge in these fifth wheels. So one thing we always install with every install is a main battery cutoff switch here. So if you ever want to put it in storage or need to work on it, so you can turn it all off so nothing's going to drain your batteries and we have a big fuse here to protect the system got your system monitor shunt right here this is how it measures everything going in and out of the battery and here's the monitor for it and this is also bluetooth so you can get this on your phone now these guys have a touch screen system on the inside so this is going to be redundant so you'll have this information on the inside screen as well Turning this way, this is the solar controller for the solar panels. This is going to take the solar power and turn it into battery power. And then we have a main cutoff switch for the solar panels, which is the red switch. And then we have a main breaker, which is the yellow resettable breaker there. Now that passes behind this switch here. So basically the solar is always going to be charging, even if you turn the system off. So we have a separate switch just for the solar if you needed to turn the solar off as well. And then we have the MultiPlus 2 Victron inverter. This is gonna be hooked up to everything in the RV. So basically you can run anything from this inverter, just like you were on shore power. All of your outlets are gonna work, your microwave, it's hooked up to your air conditioners, your fridges. Um, I mean, just like you were in shore power. And then we also have the servo uh, monitor here. This is where all your components talk to each other and it's gonna show up on the screen on the inside. Cool thing about this is you can get it online and you can monitor your system from anywhere in the world. And also me as a technician, the installer, I can monitor it anywhere from in the world as well. So moving to the inside, this is where we installed the Touch 50 touchscreen monitor. Now this is gonna tell you everything that's going on with your system. You can see we're plugged in the shore power here, our inverters charging in float mode, so it's totally full. You can see we have our fridge on, which is our AC loads, and we have some lights on, which is our DC loads, and we're inside. So we don't have any solar power coming in and you can see our battery information here. This RV came with the two-way electric and propane fridge. Um, these are highly inefficient on electric and you can kind of see it uses about 412 watts, which is about 42 amps per hour. So over a 10 hour period, it can use over 400 amp hours, which for some people that's their whole battery bank. So it may not make it overnight. So we highly recommend the residential all electric fridges because these two way fridges on electric just use a lot of power. You can run them down the road, no problem. Run them with the solar, no problem. But overnight, we usually recommend turning it to propane so you can save some of that power. So for every installation we do, we typically hook up the inverter to power everything in the RV, like the microwave, will be powered by the inverter, your outlets, all of your outlets, every single one of them. Um, even your electric furnace can be powered by the inverter, um, your air conditioners. Usually with stock RVs, they don't come with the inverter powering most of these things. It may only power, you know, maybe one or two, three outlets. But the way we hook them up, we want you to be comfortable. And to me, that's the way it's supposed to be done. So you can run your TV, just like you were on shore power, your fan. So we're gonna go ahead and try out this air conditioner on the battery power here. So we put a soft start kit so you can actually run the 
air conditioner from the batteries. And if you look here, if you see our AC loads, that's kind of our uh, what we're gonna be looking at here. So we have the fridge on, which is about 400 watts, and then the air conditioner fan, it's gonna be a few hundred watts. And then once the compressor for the air conditioner kicks on, you'll see it jump up here. So if you look at our AC loads, it looks like we're up at 1200 watts. You can tell the air conditioner kicked on. And the bottom, you can see we're using about 125 amps per hour. And if you click on the battery monitor setting here, you will actually can see the time to go at this particular rate. So it'll slowly calculate how much time you have left using battery power, you know, just depending on how much solar you got and what you're actually using. You can also get detailed information about your inverter system here. So if you're online, I can monitor your system as well and we can actually see if there's any troubleshooting you need to do. We can make sure everything's looking like it's supposed to. If you have AC input, if you have AC output. So this is great to know if you have shore power not coming in and out. Um, yeah, this is great for troubleshooting. And you can also get this online so you can monitor your system remotely from anywhere in the world. So we're going to go ahead and do a short test here with the microwave running just to make sure it works and we'll go look at our monitor to see how much power we're using. Looks like we're using about 1800 watts and we're using about 180 amps an hour from the battery. Another common appliance we all use is a shop vac. So if you can't run a shop vac we're going to be in trouble. So we'll go ahead and turn it on here and let's uh, look at our monitor back on the inside. And see what we got so uh, if you look here we're pulling about 1200 watts so about 120 amps per hour if you're looking to escape the campgrounds for good and you're looking for a solar installation we're located in Denver Colorado and you can get a free solar quote custom to your RV at solarpowermyrv.com slash free quote